What's up, y'all? Jesse Warden here. I know some of you have asked, how do I code Corona SDK, Lua, JavaScript, whatever, using my IDE? And how do I configure it? How do I install certain things? Blah, 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 blah. So today I'm going to show you from scratch. We're going to do the whole thing together. I'm going to show you what I do. And it shouldn't actually take that long. It's just a not easy process. <laughs> It's not straightforward. It's a little frustrating that it's not some standard IDE install, but it is what it is. Keep in mind, I'm a GUI guy. I'm not a command line guy. I don't like configuring complicated things. So this is kind of like the level of acceptability that I will take. So if I can get through this, then I'm sure you can too, okay? So first, we're gonna go download something called Sublime. Now, Sublime is a text editor. And it's very similar to TextMate, but it has something that TextMate doesn't, and that's called momentum. So if you're aware of TextMate, it's kind of gone through this cycle of, you know, being available, not being available, yada, yada. And Sublime, on the other hand, has gotten this huge momentum because a lot of JavaScript developers haven't had an IDE. They've been dying for something that works on the Mac. And usually on Windows, you have a variety of options. There's so many old school text IDE editors that can be modified with plugins to work with Lua. So you've got really, really old things for C, C++, e, uh, Emacs, Vmax, VI, Visual Studio, all that stuff. And there's a lot of people who are just against things as such as Visual Studio and IntelliJ just because there's these massive IDEs. They want to be quick, they want to be fast. And so Sublime kind of fits that niche. And at the same token, it's really fast. So it kind of is the antithesis of this big machine, right? So if you're if you're familiar with why the Ruby developers kind of rose in, in, in glory, it was against the slow, over-architected Java. Well, Sublime kind of is, is that same fast speed, sleek kind of thing against you know the large IDEs because we're JavaScript and we're, we're so quick and functional. We don't need classes and we're awesome, right? So that's what it's about. That attitude works really well with Lua, right, and Corona. So that's what Sublime's really about. It also happens to have a massive plugin community that's growing. So unlike TextMate, um, or, or like TextMate, a lot of the plugins that work for TextMate can work for Sublime. Not always you know, exact, but for the most part, they can. So that's why Sublime's gotten a lot of significant amount of uh, momentum behind it, because the plugin development kind of enhances its lack of features, right? But yet still retains that speed, assuming you don't spin, you know, install too many plugins, right? There's a lot of other features I'm not gonna go into, but you know, today, all we care about is really Corona, okay? So I'm gonna download Sublime for OSSX. Again, you can use it on Windows, you can use it on Linux and everything else, but Mac, it's kind of like standard, okay? So I'm gonna install the DMG. <clears throat> drag and Drizop. Once you install it, you can go to your apps folder and drag, where is it? So, Lime. There it is. You can drag it to your dock or whatever else. If you're on Windows, whatever you do on Windows. Okay. So we're going to open up Sublime. Now I'm going to have a ton of Windows here, but I'll open a blank one. So this is Sublime. It is just a black window that defaults to plain text using tabs for spaces, like when you you know tab and everything else. And the size is actually four actual spaces, even though it's still considered a tab character. Now there's a big religious debate about white space and tab characters, whatever else. Sublime, for the most part, defaults to tabs, actual the tab character. So when you check it into Git, SVN, Perforce, whatever, that's what it is, okay? Now you can open uh, multiple tabs. You'll notice that the, the key feature that most people miss with Sublime is that it deals with folders. So instead of opening an individual file, if you open, let's say a code base, okay? I'm gonna say code, a folder, it'll do this little menu off to the right here. It'll also default to having this little mini map on the right side. So when you're dealing with significantly long files, you can actually scroll quickly through it, right? And you can actually see the shape of your code, whatever else. It also has a lot of other features I'm not gonna go into, but for the most part, um, it can detect what kind of code you're doing, right? Usually based on the file and a variety of other things. Ours knows about Lua. Why is that? Well, it's because I've installed the Corona bundle. But first, let's talk about plugins for Corona. There's something called the Sublime Package Control. It is basically a way to manage packages. Packages can basically enable us to plugins, is what they really are. They enhance the features of your IDE. There are a ton of these. Some of are in development, some are science projects, some are 
required features <laughs> for actually using this IDE. So uh, this is kind of your first thing to do. So this URL I'll put in the uh, comments in the YouTube or uh, description of the YouTube. You definitely want to install this guy. And all you do is copy this chunk of text to your console. It's under View, Show Console. You just paste it right here. Hit Enter. Close Sublime. Reopen Sublime. Okay. Now that you have Package Manager installed, you can install all kinds of plugins. Before we install the Corona one, I highly encourage you to get alignment, just as a simple example of how to see if a plugin works. So the way you do it is on Windows, I think it's Windows key shift or uh, uh, control shift P on Mac, it's uh, command shift P. And you'll get this little window here for the packages. You hit install, it'll say package control, install package. So you hit enter. This is a list of plugins currently that you can install into your Sublime IDE. There are some people who take these list of packages and actually put them on GitHub or Dropbox so they can sync these list of plugins and configurations for the IDE across machines, right? They put it in the cloud, like key to fishing. You know what I'm saying? So that way you can sync it, you can keep it in. If you install a plugin that breaks, you can resync with your last GitHub, right? So it's a smart thing to do. Me, I'm a slack bastard. I don't do that kind of stuff. So what we're looking for is something called alignment. Alignment allows you to take all of your variables or functions and align them regardless of how much white space are along the equal signs, right? So you just see how it's highlighted in gray? You just click it. It'll say package alignment successfully installed here at the bottom. So I can go something like local cow equals cheese. Now it's not highlighted yet. We'll get to that as to why. We can say cowabunga new cow equals sub nine local age equals 21. That'd be by the same people that actually made the packaging control. They're the ones who made alignment. So on Windows, it's control A. On Mac, it is command control A. If I actually do command control A, it'll align them and I can actually read them. And if I add another one, say new name, I can then do it yet again and it'll align the new one, right? Regardless of how far it is. Doesn't matter what the code type is, what format it is, whatever. So that's an example of installing and using a plugin without having to actually reboot the IDE or rebuild, restart it, okay? So now let's talk about the Corona bundle. So this is this guy named Darren, who's just a really nice, cool guy. He created a set of kind of snippets for TextMate that allow you to have functions, code completion, code coloring for Corona SDK for TextMate. Well, as TextMate kind of went downhill and people just stopped caring about it. Um, it's open source now, but the, the development's just gone so slow for features, bug fixes, et cetera, where Sublime's kind of gone up. You can use TextMate bundles sometimes into Sublime. The way you do it is you first go to his page. You can do it in installations two ways. He actually talks about it on his blog. You can either use the Git way, right, where you actually install it with Git and then it automatically updates, or B, you can download a zip. The problem with both of these is that they violate the standard package control mechanism that Sublime uses. That's okay. It is what it is. One of these days, I'll, I'll put my mouth where my uh, money is, money, mouth, where is, and I'll help him out actually porting this to Sublime and actually get it in the package goal. But for now, here's the quick way to get it done, okay? So if you want, again, code coloring, code hinting, and um, uh, IntelliSense, we can actually type to know what a function is supposed to be or what methods the physics object has, you can install this plugin and it'll do so for you. So what I do is I download this zip of the actual GitHub, okay? It says Corona bundle zip. So I'm gonna go to the downloads and show you. And as you can see, <clears throat> we have this master one. What you need to do is rename this to a TM bundle. It stands for TextMate bundle, okay? So you just take that off. You now have a Corona TextMate bundle. You take that and you navigate to the user specific directory, not the hard drive, but your user specific directory. I believe this used to be documents and settings on older version of Windows. I can't remember what the new one is. On Mac, it's library. I'll show you from the top. So Jesse Warden. It's uh, library sublime text two. And you'll see something called pack. You'll see like these four folders, right? 
what you want is packages. Inside here, you'll drop the Corona TM bundle. Now, sometimes Sublime is smart enough not to restart. Don't worry about it. Just restart Sublime. It's cool. You know, close it, reopen, and it should detect it. You might get this little pop up here. It says um, error loading expected key. That's a bug. I'm going to help make sure that goes away. But for the time being, you can ignore it. It just means a plugin and failed to initialize some part. But if you, you know it worked if two things happen. A, you open it up, you see nice little colors. And B, you can type something like physics and you get all these little code hints here, right? Pretty cool. Additionally, if I do something like remove body, I can get a, a parameter, right? Okay, that's cool. Here's another example. If I do physics.addBody, I can say, what is the object? The object is, uh, I don't know, my car. It is a type of, you hit tab, by the way, dynamic. You hit tab to say the density is two, it's made of metal. The friction is made of 0 0.2, and the bounce is 0 0.2, and the sensor is false, right? So that's kind of what the colors, the IntelliSense, and the, um, the actual smart typing and the code completion that it does for you, that's really what it's for. And again, um, a lot of these things I can continue to use other plugins for, right? The alignment. So it's it's not just Lua Corona specific. Sublime supports all of it, okay? And again, if you're trying to look for files, I always do Command T. I think it's something similar on Windows. So if I want to find a file, and it uses regular expressions. So if I know it's a command, but I can't remember the exact type of command, um, I'm sorry, like a player, for example. I don't know if it's a player. Uh, it's player something, right? It'll find usually the start of players. It could actually be at the end of the file name. So again, that's what it's for. So that is a quick crash course in installing Sublime, installing the Sublime Package Manager, or Package Control, as it's called, and then installing the Corona TextMate bundle for TextMate that we've repurposed for Sublime. So you can get code hinting, code coloring, and in some form of intelligence. Okay, and again, all these links are in my YouTube description. Hopefully this will make your life coding Lua and Corona uh, more productive. Again, my name is Jesse Warden. You can contact me on Twitter, jesse at jessewarden.com. You can hit me up on Google Plus. You can hit me up in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe. And I hope this was helpful.